attorney and pointed to the case by the Georgia Attorney General. This morning, she confirmed that she has been in contact with the Arbery family. Coming up today, later today at 5 o'clock, more on that conversation and more on an investigation GBI is conducting involving prosecutors in South Georgia. Christy? All right, a lot more to learn. Thanks a lot, Andy. The Arbery family attorneys started this week with a clear mission, the arrest of William Roddy Bryan. Attorney Lee Merritt posted news of the arrest on his social media with one word caption, pressure. Aisha Howard spoke exclusively with Merritt about how his team applied that pressure and did not let up on getting this third arrest. This case started because there was an uncomplete investigation from the beginning. So GBI had to go in there Look, relook at all the evidence and go make the arrest that should have been made in the first place. We felt strongly that when they were arrested the McMichaels, they should have arrest, arrested the co-conspirator, uh, William Bryan. Was there any key thing or was this just a part of the investigation at the most basic level that led to this arrest? Or was it something that really stood out that got us to this point? Obviously not into the shoes of the GBI. It's, it's interesting that just yesterday they went into the home of the McMichaels. I'm, I'll be interested to see what they recovered that may have given them the probable cause they needed to go ahead and make that arrest. But I believe with the video evidence and the police the original police statement, there was more than enough probable cause to charge Mr. Bryan for the, the crimes that he was charged for today. He's facing a murder charge. His lawyer has been on national television and has maintained via this lie detector test that he didn't have a weapon, he didn't have a conversation with the McMichaels, and that this was not the intent in regards to his involvement, but he is facing a murder charge. Now, can you tell me anything about where that stems from? We often see felony murder charges for people who go along with others who eventually uh, commit the crime of murder. And so we knew that that was appropriate from the beginning. The lie, the lie detector test, which isn't credible evidence, it's not something that's admissible at court, and the whole campaign, the media campaign, to, to really distract the public as to his role, wasn't going to be able to overcome the, the facts in the case that showed that he played a, a significant role. In, but for his actions in blocking Ahmad in and um, cutting off his path, path, path of exit, Ahmad will probably still be alive today. What's next? Well, obviously, we want to see, see the arrest lead to a, a formal indictment and then a vigorous prosecution and conviction. But there are other people that we believe were, or were involved. Uh, we spoke with the DOJ earlier today um, about their investigation into the corruption that failed to, um, that delayed these arrests in the first place. Vice President Mike Pence is in Atlanta today. We watched as Air Force Two landed less than an hour ago. Next start event is at Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Marietta with more on his visit. Vice President Mike Pence landed just after 11 o'clock. He was greeted by Governor Brian Kemp and First Lady Marty Kemp. Uh, from here, they headed to Atlanta. They're actually meeting right now, having lunch. They're talking about the state's reopening plan. And from there, around 1.35, they will meet at the Waffle House headquarters near Norcross, where they will meet with restaurant execs, also owners, to talk about the reopening plan and talk about getting back to business here in Georgia. And just before 5 o'clock, they'll come back to Dobbins, where he'll depart, head back to D.C. And coming up at 5 and 6, we'll have more of a detailed look at Mike Pence's visit here in Atlanta. All right, Nick, thank you. Vice President Pence's visit comes three weeks after Georgia began reopening the state. Right now, there are more than 41,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in Georgia and a little less than 1,800 deaths. Those numbers according to the State Department of Public Health. Now, today, CVS is opening nearly two dozen more drive through testing sites across the state. Mara Sirianni taking a closer look at the self-swab tests now being given out. I'm here at CVS Pharmacy along South Cobb Drive in Smyrna. This is actually one of 23 new testing sites at CVS locations across Georgia, and they're using the self-swab method. Governor Brian Kemp announced CVS would join the state's testing efforts. COVID-19 testing is now available at select pharmacies drive through only. Georgia is one of 14 states to support testing at select CVS pharmacies. If you want to test, simply go to CVS.com and click on COVID-19 testing. Once you fill out a few health related questions, you'll be shown a list of CVS pharmacies in your area with available testing and times. The test consists of a self swab. According to their website, you'll be given a nasal swab. Gently insert that swab into one nostril and hold it for about 15 seconds. 
You may then be asked to repeat the process in the other nostril. All in all, the process only taking a matter of minutes. Keep in mind, you do need to make an appointment before showing up. Results are expected within three days. All right, Mara, thank you. More remdesivir is coming to Georgia. The Department of Public Health Commissioner Doctor says the new batch will be in powder form, which can be given to children. This is the state's third shipment of the antiviral drug, which is used to treat patients with serious symptoms. Pond City Market is back open. The popular site reopening just over an hour ago. Some restaurants and stores are welcoming customers again, and more retailers will open up between now and June 1st. And LA Fitness reopening its locations today across the state. You're looking at video from the LA Fitness in Cobb County at Terrell Mill Road and Powers Ferry. Our photojournalist tells us as soon as those doors opened up, people rushed out of their cars to get inside, very eager to get inside the gym. Uh, the gym is limiting the number of people allowed at a time. The sauna, the swimming pool and daycare centers will remain closed. The chain says Georgia is one of the first markets it plans to reopen. And we're getting a look inside Zoo Atlanta for the first time since it reopened over the weekend. One big change is that the zoo is now a one way street only. Guests can only head in one direction and when you get to the exhibits, there are taped off boxes for people to stand in and look at the animals. All of the inside exhibits like reptiles and birds are still closed. Also, there's no inside food service, but the outside food stands, those are still open. Today is Officer Matt Cooper Day in Georgia. The Covington police officer now back on the job 20 months after getting shot in the head while responding to a shoplifting call. He has been on a grueling physical therapy schedule for nearly two years now. He had to learn how to walk, talk, and speak again. His wife, Kristen, has been there every step of the way. I definitely think it's been a journey. I think we've had to open up our communication slightly more than like a newly married couple. An incredible recovery. The Covington Police Department asking people now to leave messages of encouragement for Matt on their Facebook page today for Matt Cooper Day. Coming up, 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy is answering your coronavirus questions. So let us know if you have a question. Text us at 404-885-7600. And remember, text this number. Don't call. You are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. 
Welcome back. It's 1214 on your Friday. We know you still have a lot of health questions about the coronavirus. So 11 Alive medical correspondent Dr. Sujatha Reddy is here helping to give you the facts, not fear about COVID-19. Let us know if you have a question. Text us at 404-885-7600. Now let's welcome Dr. Reddy. Thanks for being here on this Friday. Hi, Christy. Okay, our first question comes from Tanya. She says, I live in an apartment complex for those 55 and older, and we'd like to resume playing our board games outside. When do you think it would be safe to do so? Yeah, and that's a great question. Um, like all the questions we've been getting, I think it really depends on if there's anyone with pre-existing medical conditions or underlying medical conditions in that group. Now, 55 is not considered in that older population. So it's really going to depend on if anyone has illnesses. If you can play your board games wearing a mask, I think that would be good. This is really going to be sort of an individual decision. But being outside is definitely better than being inside. But it really depends. If someone's got asthma and diabetes, I wouldn't recommend they get too close to other um you know, residents. But if you're a healthy 55 year old, it's probably okay with a mask to head on outside and play checkers or board games, etc. A little fresh air in a board game sounds like a pretty fun Friday night. All right, this next question comes from Kara. She says my dog has really long fur and when we go for walks, I worry she may pick up the virus and then bring it inside. So can the virus live in dog fur? Should I bathe her after every walk? Yeah, good news here is I don't think you have to bathe her after every walk. We just got some newer information from the CDC yesterday, the day before, that talked about surfaces not being as important as person-to-person -person contact. In that same new information, they talked about pets again, and we don't feel pets are vectors. It still says if you're sick, try not to take care of your pets, but your pet shouldn't get coronavirus and bring it home to you. While the virus may be out there, even if it gets on your pet, it probably isn't going to survive very long. And as long as you're washing hands, I think, you know, you know, and being careful, especially with your any pet or any animal, I think you're okay. You do not have to worry about specifically the pet fur. Okay, Becca wrote in with this next question. She says, my niece's baby is teething and she's worried about keeping things clean. The child is constantly putting things in his mouth. So what are some ways she can protect him from the virus without using harsh chemicals that could be bad for him? So good news here is we know this coronavirus is easily killed with soap and water. So if you're talking about stuff in the house, toys, household things, washing them with soap and water and drying them off should kill the virus. Now, taking this child outside, I think you're going to have to be careful like you would any time um, and try to keep it from putting things in its mouth. But as far as at, in the house and things that you're touching, rattles and things like that, teething rings, anything like that, soap and water is going to be good enough. Up next is Toby. He says, my apartment has central AC. Can the virus spread through the vents? Yeah, really good question. Good news here, Toby, is no. If we, if this virus was like that, more like something like Legionnaires, I think we would hear of a lot more cases spreading. For now, we still know it's person to person. So turn on that AC and don't worry about it. All right, that is very good news as we start heading into these summer months <laughs> and these warmer temperatures. Dr. Reddy, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. We have more questions for you coming up right after this break. We'll be right back. COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it we are back now with our medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha, ready to answer all of your coronavirus questions. Let's pick up with Kira's question. She says, my husband and I have a four-year-old who likes to sleep in bed with us sometimes. She's still getting used to having her own room, but I worry we could all be at risk by sharing a bed. Is it safe? So I don't think, you know, with the four-year-old sleeping with you, you're at any more risk than, let's say, just you guys sitting around having dinner or talking. So if the family unit is the family unit, and that's where you're spending most of your time, you're, and whatever contact you have should be fine. Having said that, if one of the parents has a job where they're, ex they're exposed more, perhaps they're an essential worker, healthcare worker, and you're worried about them being exposed, quarantining that person perhaps in a separate room, separate part of the house would be the safest thing to do. But if it's a, you know, you guys have been working from home for the last several weeks, sharing a bed should be no more at risk than let's say having dinner or a conversation together. Our next question comes from Cherie. She says, the kids in my neighborhood are starting to come outside and play more often. I come across at least 10 of them as I take my afternoon walks. Is it safe for all of us to be outside together since social distancing is still recommended? So, you know, that's a hard question to answer. I think if we take it from Sherry's perspective with the children, if you're keeping yourself six feet away but still talking to them, you know, and, and you know, hanging out with them, I think that is fine for you, especially if everyone is wearing a mask. Now, for the kids, if they're all wearing masks but they're closer than six feet because they're playing, I can understand that, but that obviously is not ideal. So if you can still all be outside but keep that six feet apart, wear a mask for sure. If you can't keep that six feet apart, you should be okay. But it's still is best to do the six feet social distancing. Okay, keep that boundary. So Sandra's question is next. She says, I'm paranoid about ordering food online. There are just so many hands your food passes through before it reaches your door. So if your meal comes into contact with the virus, can you kill it by popping it in the microwave? So, you know, I think this is something that we've all been worried about and that CDC information that came out a couple days ago that talked about surfaces not being as crucial as, again, person to person. And we've known, and it's a good time to remind people, the coronavirus is not a foodborne virus. You're not going to catch it from eating potentially contaminated food. So it's, again, it's person to person. It's those respiratory, those nose and mouth droplets where the virus is going to come in contact. So food from a restaurant takeout should be as safe now as it was prior to shelter in place and quarantine and all the pandemic stuff that we've been worried about. But if you heat up your food, it would probably be fine because of getting it steaming hot if there was any virus there, it should kill it. But I would think takeout food now is as safe as food, you know, several weeks or months ago. So I wouldn't be more worried about it. Okay, very good to know. Now, this question comes from Amina. This is a really interesting one. She says, how much cleaning is too much cleaning? If overusing things like hand sanitizer can kill the good bacteria that would protect you, can using too much also make you susceptible to catching COVID or another illness? So, Mia, this is a great question because we've heard that the reason, one theory, we have so many more allergies that are so serious nowadays is because we've sort of lived in this very sanitized bubble. And, you know, you hear the joke about let your kids go play outside and get in the dirt. Um, I think, you know, and that's been the concern, our, you know, that over sanitizing. But in the short term for what we're doing right now, I don't think being super careful with your cleaning and hand sanitizer and all that is going to make you more susceptible down the road. I'm not saying we're going to have to have this level of awareness and consciousness about virus for, you know, then hopefully the long term. I think this is in the interim. And in the interim, I think it is okay for the rest of your immune system to take this virus seriously, sanitize, hand wash, wipe down surfaces, you know, as we've been doing to keep ourselves safe. All right, Dr. Reddy, thank you so much. Uh, questions keep pouring in and we'll keep having you on as long as people keep having questions. Thanks for being here. Have a wonderful holiday weekend. Happy to be here. Thanks, Christy. You too. All right, we'll be right back. For your coronavirus related medical questions, because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov. The TSA is implementing new procedures to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 during screenings. The agency encouraging social distancing and wearing facial coverings to all the checkpoints. The TSA also wants passengers to hold their boarding passes instead of giving them to officers. These changes and more have already started at airports across the country, but they'll be more widespread by mid-June. Today would have been the last day for Marietta City Schools with graduation ceremonies planned for later tonight. 11 Alive's Jennifer Bellamy spoke exclusively with the district superintendent about the challenges moving forward. Right where he wants to be, Marietta City School Superintendent Grant Rivera loves interacting with his students, but now he's facing the possibility of sending his graduates out into the world without graduation ceremonies. I've been shaking hands of graduates for the last 15 years, and it was a way in which our community could salute our students and shake their hand and smile and whisper in their ears as they walk by, congratulations, and I'm proud of you. Marietta City Schools hopes they can hold graduation late in July if possible, but with no guarantees. Riviera says he feels the same way his young daughter felt after her end-of-the-year Zoom meeting with her teacher. The tears were about, you know, how hard this has been for everyone, and I think the tears were like really raw emotion from a, from a seven-year-old. And I think those are the things I wrestle with as a father, right, and that is the inability for kids to have that, that, that goodbye. I think as superintendent, I care about that same emotion for 8,800 kids. And as if that wasn't enough, Riviera faces more problems and hard decisions. He believes most kids will be behind if and when they return to school, and that's why he's instituting online summer learning programs. Serving 220,000 meals over the last 10 weeks via school buses, now he's also looking for ways to keep it going through the summer. And at some point, he has to make a decision on whether or not students will return in August. I would say that if June 1st is a, is, a, is a date by which we'll have more information, I think you can look later into June for us to uh, try to make some more decisions, even you know possibly as you get to the 1st of July. I think what's hard right now is that Every Metro superintendent has to make a decision that is based on their staff, their families, their community. We understand, though, that families need an answer as soon as possible. Our burden and our responsibility is not to give them the wrong answer. With so much still unsettled, Riviera is impressed with how students, parents, and the whole community have battled back against this pandemic wrecking ball. I'll carry with me for a lifetime, and I hope in the same way so too will our students. I, I, I want them to remember this for what they did right, as opposed to maybe what was taken away from them. Wow, seeing all the video of those students in the hallway makes you wonder when we're going to get back to that. Remember, you can find these stories and more right in the palm of your hand. All you have to do is download the 11 Alive app for information on testing sites, CDC guidelines, and all of those wonderful stories of survival. Thanks so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. I'm Christy Diaz. Stay safe.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. 